Hello YouTube, welcome back to another episode of Train Simulator Classic TSC. Today we're going to be taking a look at another Brit Kits pack. Uh, well, we're actually going to be uh, taking a look at two packs. Uh, in part, because I, I don't see a reason to do two separate videos, but... Uh, <laughs> not in part, because it's, you know, it's nice, it's cold, it's... Just finished snowing here on the Donner's Pass, and uh, this is the perfect time to drag his stuff out, so. Yeah, yeah I get it. That's cheesy. Whatever. <laughs> but, uh, there's a freeware and a payware pack included right here. There's a Russell Snowplow down there on the end, which is freeware. It'll come with the plow and an Alco RS3 in Southern Pacific colors. I don't have the RS3 placed down. I don't use it all that often. Thanks to Diesel Workshop pushing out a really highly nice, awesome RS3. It's hard to go back to the Brick Kits RS3s at all, but uh, it, it is included if it floats your boat. I don't know if there's been an SP repaint for any of the Diesel Workshop models, so. It is there, but we also have a Lima Hamilton rotary snowplow. This is kind of the cream of the crop here, the cream of the cake, cream of the uh, the meat and the potatoes of the video, as you would say. Uh, this thing's cool. Uh, I like to check out maintenance away stuff. It's an all too often overlooked side of railroading in both simulators and physical modeling more often than not MOW stuff is just kind of passed over nobody wants it nobody fiddles with it nobody does anything with it and I kind of get why uh, it's hard to do anything with these in real you know in in life seeing these things actually in operation is awesome and it's just a real experience but when modeling it, it really doesn't capture it not quite like locomotives cars and such it's really hard to capture the appeal of mow stuff uh, it's Still kind of missed here, but not too, not too far off. We'll uh, we'll take a look at that. So this is a functioning rotary. It does actually spin up, sling, uh, uh, it does spin up and sling snow. So we'll be taking a look at that. I have no idea what this is, but it's on both sides. I'm imagining it's part of the plow, but anywho. So as far as the payware pack, you will get, of course, the the main, the rotary itself. Uh, the rotary and a tender to go with the rotary. And then you will also get two... Uh, light USRA Mikados. Uh, one is an AI and one classified as a pusher. Uh, the AI is meant to go with the rotary if you intend to operate the rotary from the rotary itself. And then you have the pusher which is just his, his uh, it's just his bone stock USRA Mikado but you can physically operate from the Mikado, it's got normal normal operations for that locomotive, but uh, that is what you'll get with that pack, and then of course the Freeware Russell Snowplow down here on the end. It's a glorified wedge, <laughs> with a cheese wedge with a boxcar attached to it, but uh, it is really neat. Now, uh, he does note Rickets does note that these are self-propelled. In real life, these are not self-propelled, but he has made it self-propelled, so 
that you can operate it from inside the cab. Uh, it effectively operates like a diesel. It, has, it doesn't really have a throttle per se. It just has the notches like a diesel. Obviously, it doesn't have the sounds of like a steam locomotive, but this is a steam plow, so you won't have to run it like a steam locomotive. You won't have to pay attention to coal and water and all that fun stuff. Oil and water, I guess. It's got an oil bunker, but it's kind of entertaining. The rotary is an oil, oil burner, but the mic is a coal burner. But eh. So, it, it does have kind of an interior going on here. Not much of one, just kind of enough to fill in the portholes here so it, you know, you're not looking straight through. Uh, let's, uh, let's click on it. Another entertaining thing is that the, the rotary gets kind of a snow effect. As you can see, it's got kind of a snow layer on top. But the mic and the Russell Plow back here do not. It's kind of a odd thing, uh, but it does kind of go with the uh, the stock Donner's Pass stuff, as you can see. The stock EP stuff comes with uh, the snow piled up on it like that, which kind of makes it stand out from anything else if you place it down. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of neat, kind of a entertaining function. The model overall looks pretty decent. It's not terrible. The texturing, however, is eh, it's not perfect. It could definitely stand to have a finer touch. That dude looks creepy. But as you can see, the texturing is kind of kind of wonky. It really ends up blurring out most of the detail. It's really hard to see the detail of the rotary itself. There is detail there. Like you do have the blades there cut out. The bracing for the blades are there, but it's just everything's bathed in this same exact color of red. There's no depth. There's no color. It's just red. So like looking straight on, you can't see anything to it outside of the little cuts in the blades. But if you look at it sideways, you can see, you know, we got the little drill here, we've got the bracing. It's all there. It just you can't see it. So that's an unfortunate aspect. And just the rest of it, it's kind of a grayed out black. Eh. Just not a not a fan of the texturing overall. It's, just, it's not not the best. Entertainingly enough, though, it does have 3D rivets, which is a nice touch. I don't know why the 3D rivets are kind of blue, but they are. But they are there. Uh, as is typical with a lot of BrickHit stuff, though, he has scripting. You change in the uh, the editor double click it'll pop up the little editor file over here and uh, you can change your road name to just about anything major in the United States Rio Grande these when you place them down they'll be lettered for the Union Pacific uh, or Southern Pacific all those other big roads if you so please so that's a nice touch um, yeah the texturing is so not my favorite and it is definitely older modeling. A lot of 2D. This is really blurry. This is really blurry. This is... I don't know. The texturing is weird. It's hard to see anything on that. We even have a plow down here. A little, uh, little spreader. So, I'm not going to go too hard, too much over the Mikado. It, like I said, it is included with the pack, but it is also, there is a whole separate USRA light Mikado pack that comes with a whole variety of Mikados. 
that I'm gonna do a completely separate video on so I'm not really gonna dive too much into uh, this locomotive just because I don't want to kind of spoil the Mikado video again kind of the same story My overall model looks actually pretty decent it's just the texturing is not really there the texturing lots of flat 2d texture a lot of that's interesting that's most definitely backwards is it backwards over here no <laughs> it's just backwards over here that's a <laughs> I never noticed that Oh lord. Ah, just a lot of... I don't know. The texturing. That's the, like the biggest thing. It's really hard to see. It's hard to see certain things and then other things are so painfully off. Like the rivets. The rivet details are all blue. And then you know your drive rods and everything over here. It's all the same color of black so there's no depth or anything. It all looks the same. So it's like, yeah, but yeah. Like I said, not gonna go over it too much. Of course, with the tender, same same thing as the uh, the rotary. You can change the tender. Or, uh, same with the locomotive too. That's, I forget to mention with the locomotive, you can't change, uh, which I absolutely missed here. But you can change the lettering on the locomotive for UP. It'll be up here, here, whatever. But and of course the uh, the Russell snowplow. Uh, again, 2D textures, kind of. It's got kind of some depth, but it, you can't see it this way. It looks like a flat picture this way, and then you look at it this way, and you can kind of see. Wonk, wonk. I got no idea what that is. That's part of the truck frame. Huh. So... And the same story with the plow. It's really, really hard to see the actual plow because the color, the te the texturing is just not there. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's the wheel poking through the uh, poking through the plow. Interesting. And of course, these are your side wings. I don't know that these are functional but normally these would kind of splay out a little bit to really sling snow so you could open these either side and these would swing out a little bit angle the snow further out uh, yeah not a whole lot going on with it but again it is freeware and it's it's still pretty neat, especially if you have Donner's Pass or uh, any other the any of the other SP slash Rio Grande mountainous routes. It's a it's a handy thing to have, especially kind of in your yards, just kind of in a uh, off in the side. But in the cab, oh hello, yellow. Uh, same story. The texturing really hides everything. Like there, there's. It looks like there's a box here. If you look really, really close. Otherwise, it legit just looks like this is stuck on the wall. It's really hard to see where the cab meets the wall. Like I just. Uh, As you can see, it's steam locomotive style controls because it is technically a steam engine in here that would be operating the plow. And then a locomotive would be pushing this. But, like I said, it is self-propelled so it will function on its own for the sake of train simulator functions. Oh, get rid of that. Uh, I don't know that any of the cab detail... Oh, we get the reverser. Don't get that brake. We don't... 
maybe? Nope, we don't get that break. And we don't get the throttle. So you do have to run this with the HUD or your keypad. Now that is a function. I don't know why. I don't know if it's... I don't know where that's coming from, but... If you hold the whistle down long enough, it will play the whistle from the locomotive and the rotary. The rotary has this kind of high-pitched little screechy... I don't... You know, I don't know if that's right for this thing or not, but... It's different. It's certainly different. And then, of course, like I said, if you hold it down, it'll play the whistle on the locomotive too, which is odd. And it smokes like a steam locomotive, but it, in essence, runs like a diesel. So, like we have our RPM cage and everything. It's, it's really odd. It is really odd. Of course, our headlights, I actually don't mind the yellow. I, I kind of like the yellow. That is nice. And then the P key turns on the, the plow. It's kind of cool. You turn on the plow and it starts to uh, starts working. Effectively, in that sense. it starts to uh, spew black smoke, like the lo like the uh, the engine inside is actually working. It's pretty cool. No bell. Uh. Yeah, it's really hard to control the speed though, since you know you're stuck with kind of the diesel locomotive idea of driving. It's odd, but for me. This is pretty cool to watch. Another kind of odd thing, snow kind of builds up on the plow. And it kind of, I don't know, I don't know what's going on with that. It, it's there, then it's not. Now the the snow, quote unquote snow, being blown away is the fact. It is in essence just the uh, steam emitters, smoke emitters. It's one there, it's one there, there, there. You kind of see where they're at, and they are definitely older. So you can see the squared off edges, which is a little bit weird, but you know, whatever. Yeah, as you can see, the uh, it kind of it builds up snow and it goes away, kind of glitchy. It's very weird. The rotation it, like spins and it glitches out and it spins. It's got it's like on a loop. That's pretty cool though. Train works do, it is pretty cool. But it's uh, quite literally the one and only one that we've seen in train simulator. <laughs> it's just like I said, it's something that often gets overlooked. Nobody ever thinks about stuff like this. Uh, let's see, we'll go back. Of course you do have the steam locomotive cab. Uh, since this is the AI version, I can't fiddle with anything. In essence, it just operates as an extra. What on earth is that? I don't know. And of course, we've got a 
Oh, it, yeah, it just flips in between. No, uh, no rustle. I believe the Russell Snowplow also pushes snow. I'm not certain. Let's go ahead and start slowing down. Sound wise, it's not terrible. Like, it sounds like, you know, the snow being thrown. But you would also hear the sound of, like, a steam locomotive at speed in here. Because that's in essence what it is. You got a boiler in here, and then it's gonna have a little steam engine up in here that's gonna be running this rotary. So it's gonna sound a lot like a steam locomotive at speed. Doesn't really capture that. Uh, let's go ahead and flip that track, but so that we can run backwards. I don't know if there's anything there is. Let's go forward a little bit more. We can swap tracks here so that we don't run into whatever that is back there. It does take it a second to get up moving though, which is kind of nice. Now I don't know if you can change the direction of the plow. But control P. Ah! Control P. Changes the direction. P. Control P. Control P also turns it off. Okay. So P. It's turned on. P. Still running. Control. Control P. Changes the direction. Control P. And P turn okay, so weird combos, but P control P will turn it on, turn it off, and change the direction. Uh, you just gotta kinda play with the uh play with it. But it actually does change the uh the shoot as well. It's pretty decent. Of course the plow blades inside. Oh goodness me throw our switches so that we can run backwards brakes are off, brakes are off and let's go the plow does have headlight doesn't emit anything or anything it's just kind of a nice little yellow glow this ain't bad there it goes. The plow will start to sling snow at a certain speed. Looks like it was about 8-ish miles an hour. So we're going to 8 right there. We'll slowly start to slow down and see where it stops. Yeah, so right there at 8 miles an hour, this plow will start to sling snow. There's no real ambient from the rotary, which is kind of eh. Pretty much just steam emitters down on each corner here. Build some speed up, see what happens. kind of starts to sling it a little bit further. That's kind of nice. It's kind of cool. Yeah, look at that. 20 mile an hour. It's really slinging it up now. It is weird that it, you know, it's it's plowing and it turns off. It's plowing and it turns off. That's kind of odd, but... I guess not too far-fetched, considering, you know, you it's like hitting a snowbank and boom snow goes everywhere and then they're just kind of clearing a little bit here and there and then boom snow bank so that's kind of cool it it really sealed the deal though if it had some actual like snow piled up on it in winter some snow piles here and there snow build up on the plow itself 
but overall it's actually pretty cool so anywho that chuff sound is way off Start breaking. Slowly, steadily, and perch. Well, yeah, that's about it, fellas. Brickets is snow fighting equipment. Rotary plow. A mic for pushing. RS3 for pushing if you uh, if you care for it. And a Russell snow plow. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you found something you didn't know that existed. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I had it's not all that much expensive. Like I said, the Russell Snowplow is freeware, and then the, uh, the Rotary is payware. I don't remember how much it is, but link in the description, as always. Uh, go check it out if you're interested in this kind of stuff. It's pretty neat. Uh, some texturing upgrades would definitely help, but otherwise, it's honestly pretty cool. Uh, something different, you know something most people don't think about but it definitely helps to have just kind of you know, sometimes maybe as AI while you're driving along you pass a snowplow or something sitting in a yard just something different so hope you guys enjoyed the video I think it's pretty cool go check it out I will see you guys next time